This is a very quick and somewhat superficial introduction to grid systems that you'll be using in your career as a graphic designer. Um, I'll talk more as we go here, but basically a grid system just gives you a place to start, makes your life as a designer much easier. If we look on the left side, you've seen this in my Gestalt video already, the objects on the left and the square on the left, they look okay, that they're, they're together, you know. But on the right side, you can see how the unity of those objects are intensified because they're put into a grid. In particular, in particular, and I'll look at the vertical alignment, and I'll, you'll be hearing me say vertical alignment quite a bit. This uh, edge is vertically aligned with this edge here, if you can see my little marker on the screen there. But let's move on here, and this will become more clear as we go. Uh, we're going to look at, uh, for this video, the work of Joseph Mueller Brockman, a very important Swiss designer. <clears throat> Excuse me. And um, Joseph Mueller Brockman in the 1950s was, he, he was, oh, I don't know what you would say. He was on the very far end of the spectrum of, of adhering to a grid system. So he had all these uh, mathematically uh, figured out elements of what the place where, and if you look here, you can see the um, typography is aligned vertically. That's a big deal. And if I would go to the next cell here, you can see how he aligned everything. The um, he, again, like Mueller Brockman was a guy who was really, really into grids. He would have like a make like a doctrine for each composition, and he wouldn't deviate from it. So like all the, you can see here like how the, he lined up all the elements, um, all these circular uh, objects are in like a, a ratio uh, proportion that he figured out earlier. So, and here's uh, another part of this grid system that he uh, had where the center of all those circular elements are coming off just under the name of uh, Beethoven. The center is right here. And so he composed the rest of the composition that way. Again, this guy was very doctrinaire, uh, somewhat dogmatic about how he used grids. In fact, when you talk about a grid system, you'll, you'll a lot of times hear it referred to as the Swiss grid. There's a lot of Swiss designers, Mueller Brockman being one of the most prominent um, that used this used grid systems. So when you, you, you'll hear the term Swiss grid as you go on with your studies. Uh, again, here's Joseph Mueller Brockman again. And if we look how he broke this down, um, the, uh, the radiuses and diameters of these circles, you know, were all mathematically figured out. And you can see how the typographic elements below are um, relating to the the circles above so and over here like this arc I don't know where to be honest with you I don't know like he this is a if you remember your geometry geometry this is called a tangent so the tangent line that hits this big circle hits this here and this nice arc goes through the the title this is all stuff he figured out in advance now is this what we're gonna do in this class no and again like many designers just use a grid as a starting point but the, this guy is a good example, you know, because he really adhered to these uh, grids that he came up with. <clears throat> this is not Mueller Brockman, and, and I think this might have been Herbert Bayer. I can't remember the name of the designer, and I should know it, but this is a poster for a 1923 um, art show. The, um, and if we break this down, the... Um, this style, the Bauhaus style, was very much in this clean, modern grid kind of thing. And um, so you can just kind of pause the video, and I'll post this PDF on Blackboard too, to see the logic of how this designer uh, put this together. The If we look here, this little uh, rectangle here, you know, the, the, of course you can see the profile of the person here. This is like the mouth. Of the profile. Now the mouth of this profile, the width, or the height of it, I'm sorry, the height of it is the same as here. Okay, so that's called like a measure, measure, 
Okay, so like you, you can pick like one uh, dimension of some element and use that dimension as a basis for all the other dimensions in your composition. This is Willy Kuntz. Uh, I think this was made like, I think in the 1990s. And uh, this guy too was very much uh, into the grid system. And what he did here was, if I go back, he had this uh, photographic element. And the photo he's using, and of course he chose the photo, has this, this circular element here. And if you look closely, it's, it's hard to see on the screen, but I'll post the PDF. There's another circular element here. So, Willy Kuntz uh, saw the circle, circle, he drew a line through these two. He put a circle here, and now we're talking about Gestalt principles, right? Similarity, so we're going to see circle, 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 circle. It's, it's, a, it's a way to lead the viewer's eye. <clears throat> so he positioned this circle based on the photographic element he chose. He vertically aligned the type with the photographic element. Um, let me repeat that. He vertically aligned the typography with the photographic element. That's a big deal that will really snap together your layouts, even if you're not you know, using a severe grid system. Have your type vertically align with the elements above or below it, and your, your layouts are going to come together a lot quicker. This is another um, Willy Kuntz piece. And if you look at the words March, see how nice he has everything like all spaced out nice and even in this grid system here. And I'll post other materials on Blackboard that you can look at um, how people come up with these grids. Uh, just the more detail on how he broke, broke this all down and how everything all fits together in these nice columns. And one more Willy Kuntz, and um, take a look at the grid system used here. Very complicated modular grid is what this is called. Um, and let's see what else we got here. So the point is, if you're given all this information, all this copy, and you're told to make a poster with it, instead of just like trying to like randomly fit everything together and staying up till three in the morning crying, come up with a grid system first, just to get things in the into place, okay? Just remember things like vertical alignment. Okay, notice that all the subheads are vertically aligned. Now some of you might roll your eyes and say, well, yeah, that's obvious. Well, no, it, it really isn't. If you haven't done this before, um, just based on experience, just a simple thing like making sure your subheads are vertically aligned really improves your layout a lot. And then it's something that if you've never done this before, you're not, you know, if nobody told you about it, you might not be aware of it. So it sounds obvious in retrospect. So just uh, take a gander at this PDF and this last little image here is just a reminder that the more expensive stuff gets, the more designed it is. Okay, like everything um, that goes into mass production where people have to spend a lot of money on it. People spend a lot of time uh, working with these these grids, proportions, and making sure uh, everything is aligned. So here's the moral of the story, folks. When you're given a, <clears throat> when you're given a um, design problem and you have to make a two-dimensional layout, Impose a grid on the canvas, and you'll start to get a more clear idea of where everything is supposed to go. So grids are here to help you. You're not supposed to be stuck on a grid or obsessed with a grid. They're just here to get a place to get you started.